this is chillin'. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. What up, everybody? This is your boy, Bill Bellamy, and this is Top Billing, the number one podcast for the culture, the movement, and the discussion. Today, we have actor, comedian, producer, writer. <laughs> I mean, the guy does every damn thing, and my little brother in this comedy game. Give it up, everybody, out of St. Louis, Missouri. Guy Tara! What up, what up? What up, Geek Tony in the place to be? Got kicked out your mama's university. What up? What up, first, Double BZ? First, first and foremost, it is an outstanding pleasure to have you on finally. Um, I know. We, we go back 20 years, bro. Like, I literally remember when you told me I really want to do this comedy thing. And I, I, I didn't know if you was really going to do it. I remember you just, like, it seemed like it was... You was watching for a second. Right. You know, it was me and Joe and all of us on Def Comedy Jam and da 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 da. And Joe was like, yo, my little brother, man, I think he going, he fucking with it a little bit. And I was like, nah. He was like, nah, he's serious. Cut to 20 years later. 31. You, thir it's 31? 31 years. 31 years later. You have done everything you said you wanted to do. Man. You have made your mark in the game and you are still climbing. That's what I love about longevity. Man. What do you think the secret is for you? You know, you know what it is, it's just finding your your your, your gift, uh -huh. right? That God gave you, man, and then finding your purpose and then just just plowing through it, man. Right. Once you walk it in your purpose, man, and your gift, man, you know God gave me to get the funny, man. So you 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 go in it and you go with it full speed ahead. And I, I just remember um Things, uh, you know, me being on the Def Comedy Jam man. tour and hitting certain cities and you would pop up and you would be like, yo, <laughs> man. Like, seriously, man, it's a trip when I, I when I see you. I have such different um, snapshots of memories that you might not remember. But for me, I was just like, yo, you know, that's Joe's, you know, little brother, right? And at that time, there weren't a lot of siblings in the game. Right. This is why I remember, like, you know, now we have Chris Rock, Tony Rock, and things Wayans, of that nature. Yeah. And the Wayne's obviously have a million members in the comedy <laughs> right. building. But I'm saying as far as brothers, you yeah. know, you guys were the first brothers that I knew personally that were in the comedy game. Now, having your brother start before you, what was that first initial conversation about, Joe, I'm not doing this for you, I'm going to do this for me, or what was the conversation? You know, Joe, Joe was surprised, man, because around the house, you know, in St. Louis, where we grew up, man, I wasn't the funny one in the family. Right. You know, at school, on the school bus, everybody, they weren't surprised when I became a comedian. But right. everybody in the house, they didn't see me as, that, you know, as, a, as a funny guy. Right. You know, Joe had the spotlight, Joe was doing this thing, so I kind of like sat back in the cut and just, and, and and just watched, right? But, <laughs> but when I, once I started, Joe was very, very supportive. You know, in the very beginning, man, I mean, teaching me just the the, the, the standards of comedy. You know Correct. what I'm saying? Smile on stage and the six parts of the stage and, mm. you know, how to write and, and all that type of stuff. So in the very beginning, yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah, and, and this is the thing that people, you just said some things, the key components of comedy, because a lot of times now um, I, I get to interview people and some of them are influenced and yet right. they're comedians and stuff like that. And I just always try to school them a little bit about the craft of comedy. You know, a lot of the guys who are social media um, heavy, they're very, very funny. I'm like, listen, bro, when you want to be a comedian, you have to commit to that. Yeah, it is, it's an art form. There's a, there's some rules, uh, there's a foundation to it, but more importantly, it's, it's reps. Yeah. It's reps of making errors and fixing and tweaking. And um, we came from the old school. Oh man, it's like, as Bob Sumner calls them, social medians. <laughs> Social media, <laughs> that's yeah. what he calls them. That's what Bob Sumner calls them, right? Man. But yeah, those. You know, I, I love what this generation is doing with the skits and the sketches Absolutely. and all that stuff. But we want them to. If you're gonna be a full comedian, you got to put them reps in. You got to get on stage, man. Yeah, wherever man. you can. And I used to always set myself up to fail so I can win. Me, what do you mean by that? Set my going on after somebody who I know just blaze the stage and see how big my balls are. Oh, yeah. And you got to do that. You got to put yourself in those pressure situations, man. Otherwise, you won't. You won't grow. Yeah, and, and those situations are serious. Those you hard know what rooms? I mean? Oof. You got to do the hard rooms. Mm. You got to go in the rooms where people don't know you. Yep. Uh, you know, sometimes 
Start with your with your closer. You know, put pressure on yourself. First time I heard that man was was <laughs> was uh, was a uh, 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 Tommy Davidson. Yeah, that was a few years in the game already, man. I was having a writer's block, man. I couldn't think of you know anything, man. And I ran into him. I remember I ran into him on Ventura and Lower Canyon. Okay. And and it was a good guys. It was an electronic store right on the corner, man. Okay. <laughs> he was leaving. I was I was going in, and I told him I said, man, I'm having a writer's block, man. He said, man, start with your closer. I said, what? He said, start opening with your closer. It'll make your other jokes have to pull their weight. He, boy, he is not lying, bro. Yeah, man. And, and it, is a, it is a steep climb. Yeah. But it's the beauty of that is it forces you to, to get better. It forces you yep. to push, push, push push because you know we all can lean on our clothes like you know like yo when yeah. I hit with this when I hit with this with this rap yeah yeah and, and I used to do stuff like stupid stuff man like going in the city and trashing the sports team or trashing the city dig so a hole dig a hole so I can see myself climb myself out of it like okay let me roll, roll my sleeves up and see how how big my balls are yeah because listen man in the comedy game I, I don't know how many people will understand what I'm trying to say here is that there is something to say about what you just said, like being in a hole, right? Mm, man. And by that I mean like you're in a you're in a place where you could get you could get booed. Oh yeah. You know, it could go really, really bad. You know, this is pre pre social media. Like oh, you got yeah. booed back in the day, people heard about it. Oh yeah. Yeah, they still heard yeah. about it. Now you they'll see it before before you get home. They right. already know. But I'm saying back in the day, you know, especially my club, you know, Peppermint Ooh. Lounge, shout out to Jersey, one of the tougher clubs Ooh. to do. You could bomb, I mean, you could bomb real bad. Ooh, and um, I've seen guys that are famous to this day Ooh, bomb in my take club. Take L's. Take L's in my club and then come back three weeks later and get a standing ovation. And that's what I love about comedy. Like, just because you have a bad game, it's like, you know, Kobe didn't score 35 every nah, game, nah. but he kept he, he shot like he wanted to. Exactly. He kept playing like he wanted to. The confidence to. is there. It's just sometimes, hey, it's just not your sometimes night. Sometimes you just can't make a shot. Right. And and I ne I've never in this, in my 31 years in this game, man, I've yes. never blamed an audience for a bad show. I don't believe in bad audiences. Okay. I just don't. I, I I don't believe that I do that. We do this more than they do that. So we should be better at this than they are at that. And and the thing oh, about it is, it's that. our job to kind of find where they are and bring them into our world. So I never blame an audience for a bad show. What are the odds of? 200, 300, 400, 400 5,000 people getting together before the show saying, we're not going to laugh at Guy. Huddle break. <laughs> the odds are against us, man. Yeah, and if they laughed yeah. at the other comedians before us, right. now all of a sudden they're going to shut down. So it's, I never blame an audience for a bad show. Right. It, it, is, it is our job to, you know, to do what we do. And I, I remember, you know, Earthquake is, is one of my guys. Quake, you Quake. know, me and Quake, you know, we go way back. And um, Quake, ha you know, he, he always have these one-liners that, like, stick mm. with me. One of his sound bites. One of his sound bites that I remember he said, he said, it's not how many followers you have, but who you can follow. Ooh. I was like, damn, Quake. Yeah. He was like, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. real talk. And, he, yeah. and it's a true fact, especially in the state of comedy where we are now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they might give a guy, you know, um, let's say right now, Matt Reif. Yeah. I think Matt Reif right now is riding an amazing wave. Um, I remember when it's not even maybe six or seven years ago, you know, Damn. Uh, Sims Matt, the Matt, I saw Matt come out. Yeah. I saw Matt grinding. Matt right. was, Matt was opening for me. He was opening for other cats. He was doing guest spots. Matt was grinding. But he also found his audience too. Absolutely. He found out that, you know, a lot of women, good looking guy. Good he found out that guy. a lot of women came to his shows mm -hmm. for the jokes, but they also came to, you see, know, Matt. to see Matt. Yeah. You, you're, you're in a similar situation too. Same thing. The women came to see, oh, let's build Bellamy. But okay. And then he's funny on top of that. Yeah. Same thing it. with Matt Reif. And then I think Matt had also a, a huge gay following too. Guys used to come to see Matt too. And Matt was like, oh, well, you know what? Hey, everybody you come. come see me. Exactly. And, and, sa and same, same with you. It's like, so, you know, you play to your audience. And it's like, okay, this is what I got. But now once you get here, I got let me show you. you what I got. Yeah, and, it, and it's a beautiful thing. What I wanted to say about um, Matt Reif that I really admire and love about him was his tenacity. Yeah. You know, he was grinding. He was coming mm. up, coming up, like grinding like, yo, he'd be like, yo, B, I see you in Atlanta, man. I'm going to come do a spot. I'm like, yo, just
just do the whole weekend, work out, and it don't matter. Right. You know, cut to now, sold out all over where, yeah. everywhere, doing his thing. You know, he's got guys popping up and doing guest spots with him now. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so that's what I love about, about the game. It's like everybody can get in in a different area. Everybody's train stop is not the same. You might get on in Chicago. I get on in Jersey. You get on in St. Louis, and then you ride. Right. You just ride, right? Once you get in there, you get going. And then once you come to L.A. from all them cities, check your ego at the border. Yeah! Check your ego at the border. Because I'm telling you, you come in, you're a big fish in a small town. You come to L.A. with your chest out. And I'm telling you, that sidewalk outside of comic clubs filled with comedians, well, well, that's where you earn your stripes. Absolutely. That's where you humble. We we go in on you. We haze you kind of a sort. I do that <laughs> I do that on the road, man. If I'm on the road, I'm doing, you know, the comedy circuit, a new comic, you know, try to come into the green room with the chest. Out, I haze them on purpose, and they be like, "Oh, I thought guy was nice guy, but he just hazed me." But I'm like, "Look, I'm I'm getting ready for L.A. for New York." You're not ready, man. I don't know how you feel about this, man. I always have compassion for the young guys, but they usually be doodle, man. Oh, man. Damn. Well, you know, and what? I be rooting for them, but, G. But here's the thing: sometimes Damn, it depends on the doodle. city, man. Sometimes, like it, New York and New York, L.A., Chicago, those are cities. D.C. You got cities with a lot of comedy clubs. They can get up a lot of places. You go to some of those small towns; they may only have one club. Yeah, they only get up once so a month. So they don't get up that much. Yeah. they don't have the reps, but it goes back to getting them reps in. But they they gotta be they gotta think outside the box and just play. If different, different, do functions, anything, different events, host an event, a wedding, host a wedding, host, host a barbecue, whatever you can to be funny. You yeah. don't, you don't wait on the comedy club. Right, right, right. Because I had a guy time. recently, man, that was so crazy. I was, uh, I ain't gonna say his name. <laughs> <laughs> I had two back to back weekends where the dudes ate it, right? And but they come in optimistic, right, 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 right. Yo. And, and you're a big name, so they're excited to work yeah, with Bill Yeah, they Bellamy. like, yo, Bill, yo, you my man. Yo, I love you, man. How to be a player. Watch this, the booty call joke. you the booty call, you know, the car long. Hey, man, I've been doing comedy out here six, seven years, man, and I'm really nice with it. I got my <laughs> own, you know, I do Tuesdays and stuff. So you start looking like, oh, he got his own night. He got to yeah. be solid. Then another comment say, yo, my man, he good. Yeah. Yo, all right, what you need? Uh, I would love to get a guest spot. All right, I'll give you five minutes. Five is, yep. You can, we'll know what you got in three. Yep. Two minutes and 30, he taking the L. Man. I said, oh, Lord. I try to talk to the young comics, especially the black ones. Because yes. a lot of these black comedians, man, they're in their small towns, and they come in, and they want a guest spot, or sometimes, like, man, the club hating on me, and they ain't putting me up. And then I see, you know, them go on stage, and I see why, I see why they ain't putting you up. <laughs> You know you can't play you can't play a diverse audience. You can't play a, a, a mature audience. Yeah. And your jokes are so local and so you know uh, just just uh, pedestrian. Yeah, and yeah. elementary. And I tell him, I talk to him. I said, dude, you gotta you gotta expand your your, your material. You gotta write. And then the club is because the clubs need comedians. Absolutely. And if they ain't putting you up, it ain't them. It's you, or you come in. They come some some coming in and break the rules that they don't. They gotta know the hierarchy. They gotta know you know how to play the game. Correct. And there definitely is a hierarchy in comedy. And, you know, there is there is a rhythm to the madness. Yeah. I, I want to I want to commend you. We did a project most recently, which you got nominated for an Emmy Fat Tuesdays and Fat Tuesdays for anybody that's watching and listening was a moment in comedy history that Hollywood needed. Mm. And it was an opportunity for you to solidify your stay here as well. But you gave a lot of comics in Hollywood that wasn't getting the main room glove a night to get some shine at your night. How did Fat Tuesdays come about? Man, Fat Tuesdays came about, man, because then, you know, before I moved to LA, my brother Joe was always talking about the Comedy Act Theater okay. in Lemert Park in South Central. Absolutely. Robin Harris was the host and all the celebrities came through. Michael Jordan and Moses Malone and Eddie Murphy. Yeah. And all those people came through, man. And no doubt. When I got to LA in 92 after the Rodney King riots, dude, I, this, this was not that night Joe talked about. Cause, because Hollywood quit coming to the hood to see black comics. Celebrities quit coming south of Wilshire to see black comedy. So I'm like, okay. We gotta change this. We gotta do something. So I already, I was already put on. I already had an agent manager, but I'm like, there's so many talented cats and females out there, man, that's getting overlooked. I gotta bring the hood to Hollywood, right. and that's how Fat Tuesday started. But I give, I give my dad all the credit, man, because growing up as a kid, my dad always preached, be proactive. Right. Don't wait to be asked to do something. If you see something need done, go ahead and do it. So. You know, with all that teaching growing up, man, that seed being planted, man, I saw a void in Hollywood where we weren't getting showcased. So 
I went to Hollywood and said, let me create a night. Let me showcase black comedians right on Sunset Boulevard yeah. at the comedy store, the world famous comedy store. And that's how Fat Tuesdays, you know, grew, man. And it was incredible, man. I remember um, going, my, I think one of my first Fat Tuesdays. Belly I, room. I, I, I got footage. Oh my God. I got footage of you in the belly room. Bro, I'm in the belly room, Arsenio. Uh, he comes in with Eddie. Uh, it was. It was. It was that joke where you saw. I think you were talking about dating, and you said, "You know, I should fuck you up." Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember the whole joke, but it was a joke about <laughs> about dating this chick and something. She said something smarter. I don't know, but you was like, "I, I, should, I should fuck, fuck you up." <laughs> You had a blue suit on Yo! and a white shirt. See the thing about the thing about that, <laughs> but uh, Fat Tuesdays for guys and girls that are listening, right? It was like our playground. And other right? pronouns. It, it, it was it was it was our playground to have fun. Like we would come in there. You you gonna get a cocktail? Yeah. You gonna see some beautiful Ooh. women? It was un. Ooh. Unbelievable. It was only fans before only fans. It was only fans live. <laughs> it was only when fans I tell you, only fans. it was unbelievable <laughs> women in there and superstars. And and then you got up and coming comics yep. and you had names. I remember seeing Martin Lawrence there and oh, I'm man. like, yo. And this is crazy because I was like, yo, Martin Lawrence is a comedian too. I remember, I remember like going, yo, that's crazy. But what made Fat Tuesdays was you guys, man. Guys like you who had already had TV credits, man, mm -hmm. coming in, dropping in. So it made my job easy man because I had cats like you my brother Joe and you know rest in peace Ricky Harris yes and then they came in and did spots man Chappelle yeah come in and do, just two spots and can I get a guest spot but they were already y'all was already on yeah but still the fact that I didn't have any advertising nothing but the drop-ins by you guys validated the room yeah it, it literally was must see Yvette TV Wilson, man you know it was it was really I'm so happy that uh, if you guys want to see uh, the the documentary, it is on Amazon Prime, and it is actually a wonderful journey through comedy. And yeah. I watched it. Actually, I watched it twice because I just kind of was like, you know, damn, I'm glad. It made me. It made you, me proud a part to, of it, man. Yeah, it made me proud to be a comedian. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? It made me say to myself, "Thank you, God, for blessing me with the gift," because I'm a part of a culture that is is a compliment to the game. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was inspired by, I mean, I'm going to be 100. I was inspired by you guys, Def Comedy Jam. Those okay. first couple of seasons of Def Comedy Jam. Watching you guys on those shows, man. I was like, and, and I modeled Fat Tuesdays after Def Jam. Right. You know, that, that raw, I'm not going to tell you what to say. I'm not going to censor you because, and you know, and you're sitting in the documentary, those who haven't seen it yet. You know, when you got those mainstream white rooms, man, you and your black so comics, safe. they want you to, they want you to, they want you to tailor your act and be oh, safe. Fat God. Tuesdays was that cookout. Fat Tuesdays was BET weekend every 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 night. Yeah. The stars were there. The flavor was there. The energy was there. You it was the say, 90s. You, it was us. Like, I, I honestly, Unapologetic. Man, it was unapologetic. You could be yourself. Like, yeah. now, in this climate that we have of council culture and all the goofball stuff. What is that? That, that, that <laughs> we couldn't, you don't understand. Us having the freedom to be ourselves yeah. created so many stars. Yeah. This new cancel culture thing where everything is guarded. Oh, oh my God. It's it's almost like they're trying to make the whole world a main room. Right. Well, well, yeah, mainstream room. A mainstream yeah. room. Yeah. yeah. And everybody ain't that ain't everybody's swag. Or make it like, you know, uh, you know, the kids now on the everybody gets a trophy. Y'all owing 17. Y'all ain't getting no damn trophy. <laughs> Nobody man. get no trophy. No damn trophy, man. You suck. How do you, how do you feel how do you feel about cancel culture and it's and it's I don't think it's influencing us at all because obviously we're veterans in the game but I'm saying like do you think that we should just keep pushing through or do you think we have to like kind of no. I don't know te no. teeter to no push push through be you be you be you, you no, no one's gonna no one can tell me uh, I'm the god of my com of my sets I create my con so I'm God I'm the creator of my comedy sets okay mm -hmm. you're not gonna tell me what to do with my set and how I feel at that moment. Right. But I'm not perfect. I'm gonna say some things. I say some things all the time that's over the line, but that's how I feel. You gonna tell me how to how to freaking feel? No, Fuck out of here. Yo, but you always been like that, because I will never forget. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will never forget this situation. I'm hosting Last Comic Standing, right? Oh. <laughs> I said, oh my God. I said, guy's not gonna make it. 
<laughs> I said, God is not going to make it. And and the reason I said that was because you was not going to stop being God. And that's the thing. Last time I'm standing, man, I, I, I really never should have done it. I took some advice from some friends because they're right. like, you know, oh, you expand your audience. You know, that you can go and do clean shows and all that stuff. And I'm not I'm not virtually. That's that's not really who I am, to be right. honest. Right. I said, you know what? It's a challenge. I love challenges. Let me do it. Right. But the funny thing about it is I knew I was I knew I, I was out when they By had the you. commercial, you, I knew you wasn't going to be but on know, the show. Thing. No, even before that, because what they do is when you do those shows, they want you to type your set out word for word, word for word, and 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 send them what you're going to do in that set. Now we had to do that like four weeks before we actually taped. So now I'm on the road perfecting that set, mm -hmm. right? You you go on the road, you got four weeks to get that set together. Okay, you're gonna change a couple of things. You're gonna change the word here. You're gonna make a joke stronger. You're gonna do this. So I did that and I sent it to the network. I said, hey, I emailed. I said, hey, I'm doing the same set, but I changed but I a couple. Added of, this. I, 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 I made it stronger. They sent me an email back say, stick to what you sent us. I said, but I made it better, stronger, funnier. It sent me an email back. Stick to what you sent us, or you won't air. So I sent an email back saying, I guess I won't air. So I did the set the way I changed it, the way I know to do it, because none of those people did stand up in the first damn place. Yeah. So I did it, and when you look at it, they everything new I added, worked. they edited it out. No, it worked there, but in the edit, they edited all the new stuff out. Oh. So it made my set look like it was choppy and all over the place. I'm like, that's what y'all doing? Yeah. Wow, okay. And then they had people, man, it's funny because people called me and was like, that I had friends who went to some of the other tapings yeah. and were like, yo, they had me edited at your show, but I wasn't even there. They had them look with frowns on their face, you know, and they, they weren't even at my show. So they, it's manipulative where they take yeah. different audiences and they can set you up to fail if they, if they weren't editing. They can do that. Yeah, I felt, I felt, I actually felt bad because I, hold on. But, but if you, Okay. But if you remember it, I knew I was going home because when they came, when they called, <laughs> when they called us all back on stage, I had my garment bag. Yeah, I had my garment bag with me, and they you were like, was, the stage manager was, was like, like "Yo, B, I'm done." They was like, "You can't, you can't bring that on stage." I said, "Why not? I'm, I'm going anyway. What you gonna do?" And, and and they went, they talked to the truck. Said, "Yo, guy, Tori has his garment bag out here." They, they, they were like, "Let them have it." I, I said, "I know, I'm going home." Yo, my man said, "You not sending me? I'm sending myself." <laughs> right, right. <laughs> because you know. With those shows, man, I'll they, never they have that. you sign this crazy. big old this contract like a phone book, yes. and they own you. They own like, you. The, like they own every TV show or movie idea. They have you write down before you before you tape the show, and then they basically say if if you make it through or any of these TV shows or movies that you wrote down, if you do these after you did Last Comic Standing, we own like thirty percent of it. Yeah, it's, it's they a, own it. Even if you didn't blow up after, uh, off a of last comic stand on all those other shows, they own a part of your that movie or that TV show. That's whack, yo. Yeah, hey man, listen. You know the game is is tricky, and you know when one of the things you said earlier, which is is which is who you are. You said you know I draw the line. I'm not gonna stop being me. No. And I just remember when you told me you was leaving, right? <laughs> <laughs> Deuces. You know, you was so St. Louis, bro. You was <laughs> so like, yo, B, man, I know you my man. I know you, but this ain't me. No no disrespect. I love you to death. I'm done, bro. I don't give a fuck. You was out, <laughs> man. It was so funny. I was like, they were like, is Guy leaving? I was like, yeah, I think yeah, he's I'm done. I'm I think out. he's done. I think he's done. No, don't, 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 he don't need to talk to y'all. And, and at this point, I had already done the movie Life. <laughs> The movie American History X. Success, Fat Tuesday is already a success, you know, in the clubs. And you got these people who are judging Who's me, judging? Who, can't, Yo, who can't hold a candle to me. Do you remember this? Me. Do you remember this? <laughs> so, this is when I said, guy is going to leave <laughs> last time standing. So, after you do your set, you got three judges telling you, critiquing your who set. Who can't follow you who, anyway. Oh, there, there you go! See, you already know he having a flashback. They was, they was critiquing his set. He was like... Hmm. <laughs> how long bit. how long you been doing comedy <laughs> your opinion don't mean nothing how long because <laughs> it's, like, it's like come on how you yo, judge how me? you judging me you can't even follow me next <laughs> go ahead yo i was like yo malcolm x is doing oh i got some more mates what is it you got it, you got it you okay got it. i was like yo guy is spazzing what triggered you when they started critiquing you? I bro? did a joke about uh, driving through some southern town and seeing the KKK in between in the train of trees burning crosses, right? right? And had the white sheets on. And I did a joke saying that they um, 
uh, gas prices was high. They can't afford enough gas to burn crosses anymore. Uh, the, uh, gas, uh, the, the economy is so bad they can't buy the sheets they used to buy with the high thread count to, to hide their faces. Right. You can see them through the sheets, right? right? There was a joke about saying that now the economy is bad because Bush was in office at the time and the economy was terrible. And they said, guy, you really didn't see a burning cross and white sheets where you can see the face. I'm like... It's comedy. Right. You think you think you think a monkey really stuck suck his dick in Richard Pryor's ear, <laughs> and that joke that he does. Right, right. I mean, and these are three comedians who know we we hyperbole everything. Absolutely. We and you're gonna judge me on a joke which was a very well written and clever joke in I, the first place. My, I, I might see, add because the thing was, you know, the, the, the guy was like we we can't buy the thread count we used to buy. We used to buy 800 thread count. We got a 300 thread count. Now they can see it through the sheets. They can see it through the sheets. And I'm just like, and they're gonna critique that? Are you kidding me? Yo, you lost your yeah, mind. I was like. God. I say, I say, guys, not ready for for. Um, I'm not ready for. I'm not ready for family TV. You, you know, not ready for family TV. I say, uh, guy, I'll see you at the uh, Fat Tuesday. <laughs> so yeah. cut, cut to now. You know, I feel like you're 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 in a in a wave, and by the wave, I mean like you you're in your skin. You you feel good. You know what I mean. You're happy. You uh you are. You where you're supposed to be. Is the journey has the journey been difficult for you, or has it just been? Give me a, how has the journey been from you to get to this place where I feel like you seem happy and content with your it's career? It's been great, man. I mean, when, you, when you're when an artist, period, man, you're always trying to find yourself who you really are, whether it be visual art, whether it be performing arts, whatever. You're always trying to find who the hell you are, right? Oh, correct. And, and I will say that D.L. Hughley helped me with that because I know, remember, eight months doing stand-up, we did a show in Bermuda, okay. right? And I was so nervous about uh, them translating my jokes into in, in another country, right? Okay. And then they're worried about who the hell I am. And he said, man, it's so funny. Dio said this. He said, man, it's so funny when you start doing comedy, you try to be everybody else but yourself. And then after a while, you get you, you come to the realization like, man, I was just funny being me. Just Trust being you. Trust yourself. Yes. Trust that funny guy or woman that you that that you were around your friends around your family or just in general we try to be every because we study the game and we know who we like Correct. and we try to be we kind of mimic them a little bit, a little bit and, yeah. and, and that's gonna happen all right you're gonna start sounding like who you watch or who you study the most but after a while you come to your own skin and you're like you know what i'm i'm, I'm me and, and and what made me do it was I always said to me, when I was headlining, I started headlining, I always tried to be big. Right. You know, overthought it, overthink everything, right? And I said to myself, if I can be as comfortable headlining as I am when I'm hosting, I'm gonna be a bad motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Because hosting, when you're you don't hosting, have the pressure. You, you don't have the pressure, you're free, you, you're, you're trying loose. stuff, you're cool, and you want that same feeling when you're headlining, take the pressure off like, I'm the name on the marquee, I'm the headliner, and just be your damn self, and you're gonna be fine. Man, that is... That's profound. So you be, you gonna be all right. That's a Trust really yourself. that's a really good piece of advice for people because, uh, you know, like even for me being you know uh, you know a veteran and doing this a long time, you know people pay X amount of money. Yeah. You know they are expected. You know uh, three laughs per second kind of thing or yeah. whatever. But I have my best shows when I'm just loose. Man, t say it again. Golly. And still to this day, I still have to talk myself. You know, I'm, when I'm just loose, yeah. like I'll be, and I, I could improv, I'll say yeah. something that'll be crazy. Cause sometimes the stuff you say is in the moment is funnier than anything you can write. You gotta be Peyton Manning, and I say this when you're, when you're a comedian. You can have your set list of what you wanna do. Okay. But the audience ain't feeling some of your topics. You better Omaha out that bitch real quick. <laughs> Omaha, Omaha, you better you better switch. If they ain't if they ain't digging your political stuff, you better be able to switch. You got you gotta have a lot of stuff in your bag. And and Chris Rock taught me that one time where uh, he was hosting Def Comedy Jam mm -hmm. at the episode when Shucky Ducky, uh, the famous quack, quack. infamous episode with that, when he took an L on, on Def Comedy Jam. My man, shout out to Shucky Ducky. Mm -hmm. But but Chris Rock was backstage. He said, "Man, always have something in your bag to go to to switch gears." Correct. Because because if you stuck to one set, you, you, and, and, you can and, die. And, and they ain't and they ain't feeling it. You got to be able to know how to pivot, and that's again comes with, you know, the the youngins. That's why getting your reps on stage in any situations is very important because right. you got to be able to Omaha and switch gears if they're not feeling a certain subject. If they ain't feeling your sex jokes, switch to something else. If they ain't feeling right. your crowd work, switch to something else. But you got to get those reps in. You got to you got to put yourself in those situations to set yourself up to fail so you can win. Come on now. <laughs> Goddamn guy Tory done got became a goddamn <laughs> philosopher and a damn mentor in this game. 
And, and, and it's it, one it, teach one, bro. That's what we're here to do. We're but, the servants, man. But here's the thing, bro. And here, here is a, the beauty of who you are. You are and have always been committed to it. And you've always been a good dude, bro. I work on like, it. Like, like, like you always struggle. been. Yeah, what I'm saying, you always been a good dude. Like, I ain't never had a, I ain't never had a bad guy T story in my whole <laughs> career. Everybody you ain't, you ain't is talk to the right people. Right, right, right yeah. You I, you know, I gotta go. I gotta, Green. I gotta go talk to the. <laughs> talk to bitter buddy. <laughs> they, 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 they'll, they'll have one for you. Oh right? man, me and buddy had a fight. Why? Like a physical fist fight. In Buddy New York, Lewis? after Def Comedy Jam, after one of the tapings, man. Why? Man, because they hired us as punch-up writers for the different hosts they had. The season they had all the, the all-star hosts, right? Okay. So I did a set, and I punched up, wrote, and I did warm-up. And we were heading back to, to, um, to L.A. from New York. And, you know, when they picked it, when we got to New York, they all picked us up in limos, right? Okay. We all had limos and sedans, right? Going back, because a lot of us had the same flights, they got a 15-passenger van, mm -hmm. right? I was cool with it. I ain't tripping. We going to the airport. And Buddy was upset that... He had to get on the van, and he was mad that all the luggage was bad. And he just started bitching, right? right? He started bitching. And I'm like, man, get your get your ass on the van, man. Quit bitching. No, man, they're gonna send limos for us, and they're gonna send us back like we just slaves on this old 15 passenger van. Dad, I'm getting off, and his bag was already in the back. I said, man, well, we you ain't making us miss our flight, right? So he ended up just wah wah wah. I ended up kicking him in the head and throwing his his man purse. This was way back in the early 90s, he had a man purse. He had it. I threw it on Broadway <laughs> and. Uh, and I would say, man, if you put more energy, <laughs> this is so funny. I said, you put more energy into your jokes than bitches about what you're riding in, maybe you would have taped. <laughs> you know, I guess, maybe they'll pick you up. Maybe you would have taped an episode or something. But, you know, but he's a you know, great writer, as you know now. Yeah. You know, in these streets, uh, helping a lot of comedians and with their scripts and with their stand up. He's a great writer. But but back then, man, hey, he you was just a young had guy. enough guy. Before I got my teeth, before I got my teeth fixed, too. Right, right, so right. I was, I was so a, you was I a little was scrappy. A, yeah, I was a little scrappy. Scrappier back then. Before speaking, I, got the speaking, I always wanted to tell this story, but I can only tell this story with you. And I hope you don't mind if I bring this up. There was a, there was a fight that you and I prevented in Philadelphia with Joe and D. Lee. Oh, Do you remember yeah, that? Yeah, man. Uh, listen, bro. D. It, Lee was this promoter, a stand-up comedian promoter, promoter who promote comedy shows. Okay, so true story, true story, <laughs> right? This is a show that's going downhill, it's burning, it's on fire, everybody's mad before we even do the show, right? So <laughs> the promoters, lunch. so the promoters want to take us to lunch to kind of maybe calm shit down, right? <laughs> so, I gotta, I gotta tell this story, I can't wait. So all I gotta say is, I'm sitting to the left of Joe Torrey, Guy is sitting to the Right, am I correct? Right. And Joe's in the middle. Okay, right. cool, 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 cool. So, D. Lee is sitting directly across from Joe, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, every time Guy would say something, Joe would say a little something. Like, so let's say it's like, yo, man, I'm pretty cool with my hotel room. Yeah, I wish I could say that. Yeah, right, 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 right. right, right. right. So, you're like, Joe, man, what's going on? Nah, I'm just saying, man, a lot of stuff around here ain't right. So, so, so God goes, man, oh man, I love my steak. Wish I had a steak. Right, Be right, nice if right, my steak right. was cooked the way right. I eat my steak. Guy's like, yo, man, what's going on with you, Joe? Hey, man, I don't know. I'm good, man. Don't worry about me, brother. I'm just going. I know one thing. I know one thing. Things going to change around here. So, guy is the good guy. It's like, good guy, bad guy, right? So, guy's like, Joe. What seems to be the problem? You're in your feelings about something. Nah, little bro, relax, bro. You ain't got nothing to do with this, right? But he's it's so staring. uncomfortable. Yo, it's so, it's so, it was so uncomfortable. And so I'm, I'm, I'm like, Joe, is everything okay? Hey, yo, Big B, 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 we good, man. We good, bro. We good. Don't worry about me, B. I'm all right. Let me eat. Hey, but he was stabbing his steak. I, I think he was saying something. I ain't got a problem, Joe. I got a problem with this motherfucker. Yo, 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 yo. So you know how you, you cut your steak like this? You know, like left the uh, back, front and back. He stabbed his steak and cut through it like. <laughs> I was like, I ain't never seen nobody cut their steak like this and brought it to him, right? So I said, Joe, you don't cut steak like that, Joe. He was. I said, is there a problem? He said, I got a problem with that motherfucker right there. I was like, oh shit! And D Lee was like, what's up, fam? His face was so defeated. Yo, he was like. 
why we got a problem, bro? Oh, no, he called him fam. Yeah. He said, listen, fam, <laughs> what's the problem, fam? Joe, if it wasn't for me and you, yeah, he'd if it wasn't for me, he would have killed It wouldn't have been a show. Because <laughs> Joe, you know, you, 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 and, you, and you know, you, you were on the Def Comedy Jam tour with yeah, Joe. Yo, Kiki Joe Kree got, and, Joe got and, it real and, and, tempered. And Bernie and all those guys, man. Oh, so my God. You, you always used to a certain standard. Yes. Certain hotel room, certain treatment, yeah, he, you know, and anything below that is like. It's, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. And, and you, had a, you had a promoter who was trying to cut corners oh, but they was cutting all the corners on joe which was which right. was messed up right but look bro positioning was everything yeah. in that moment because yeah. it was like a final destination joint right. where you just <laughs> missed the butter knife like it went shoot. like so joe lunges up <laughs> me and guys like no oh. and the butter knife the butter yeah. knife <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not sure if Joe even got all of his deposit either. Yo, it was something like that. You it was one of the most. I never could tell the story because I was like, I don't have nobody to tell it to. Right. <laughs> or to validate it. <laughs> you know? Or to validate it for sure, man. But yeah, yeah. But that's, see, we, we saved a life. Yeah, we saved a life. A light skinned dude, too. He was light skinned. Yeah, dude, it was light skinned. So he would have died on site. Yeah. He would have died. Matter of fact, it wasn't a butter knife. I think it was a steak knife. It was a steak knife. And, and it was a really good it, Smith yeah. and Walensky yeah. steak yeah, knife. Yeah, it was one of those. So, uh, uh, D. Yeah. Lee. Yeah. Glad you're alive. We <laughs> saved your life. <laughs> on to uh, on to better moments. Um, you've been touring all over the place, and I've always wanted to ask you: What are some of your favorite cities that you like to play? Man, it's so crazy. That give I, you that give you the energy where you like, oh my god, when I get there, I'm tearing them up. It, it's you know, Houston comes to mind, DC comes to mind. Yes, you know, St. Louis is so much pressure for me because it's home. Yes, you know, you want to do well in your home, but I overthink always cities like that. But like uh, Chicago has always been great, man. I mean, every city has really been good. Yeah, I have more cities I don't like than I do, than than I, than, I, than, I, than I, you know, that I don't like. Like Naples, Florida, some of them whole Youngstown, <laughs> Youngstown. It, it just be some easy. of them. It's just like ah, uh, it's like it's it's just I don't know. It's it's just ass. Some of those cities are ass. <laughs> it's just ass. And, and it's not. And, and again, I don't want to sound. You right, right. I, I don't want to sound. But you're like, this is my um, last time seeing me. Yeah, I want to sound. I always tell like, them like, now. I'm like, this is your last time. Take a take a right. picture. It's never You'll the never see folk, me again. You will never see me city, again. The energy sometimes just it's just you're not. It's not you don't conducive. get up for some of those cities. Yeah, you know what I'm saying you don't get you don't get up for them. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not the audience. And sometimes you know what some cities like I said I never blame the audience. But sometimes you gotta be patient with the audience too because some some audiences aren't trained aud comedy audiences. Correct. You ever, you ever, you ever run into that? An yeah. audience is like, okay, then they, they don't. Sometimes they don't know where to, you do. A, you do. You've been doing joke, the same joke a thousand times, and it works and in every get, city, in but every this city, one. And 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 you get to this city, and it's like, but they don't put them. They don't get it. But again, that's not their fault. Maybe we didn't set it up the right way, or maybe we yeah. did it lazily, and we didn't. You assume that they know what we're talking about. So again, I'll take ownership in all my L's, but still, just some cities you just don't get up for. Did you ever? Um I'm gonna share this. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you bombed? Do you remember where it was? I, I remember the first time I bombed. It was crazy. Man, I'm trying to remember. Because uh, I, I never like my sets. So uh, I think the first time I, I can say I took an L was, it was kind of an L. I was like, doing a show somewhere in New York, way out in New York, me and Tony Rock. And, and the audience was laughing. It, 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 was, it was cool. But this one dude who got into it with, we got into like a back and forth. Going back and forth, yeah. yeah. We got into a back and forth and it got, it got a little tense in there for a minute and Tony Rock came on after me and just destroyed this dude, you know, with jokes after that, man. But that was the only one that really stands out, to be honest, because I, I'm always, I'm always, I over, I don't say over prepare, but I always try to be prepared for yeah. for, for, for Hey, sure. man, I, I remember, um, I'm gonna tell you a quick. Oh, I know one. Wait, wait, wait. I know one I bombed. Oh, I was doing a show for I think I was doing it for the Deltas. I think I was doing it for the Deltas. It was in LA too. It was a, a an event. Okay. It was twice actually. You know what? It, it, it was twice. It was mostly women. It was the Deltas one time. I think uh, a corporate event with black I women another time. And and it's like it's like. I just didn't hit. I didn't resonate with them. I don't know what it was. Bro, I, I just didn't resonate. So I, bad man, on I, this. Oh, I died to death for a thousand dollars. Bro, let me tell you something, man. I started with my clothes, and my clothes didn't work. Oh, that's man. when I knew this was it. This oh, so man. it was a it was a corporate event that I did for some really. Uh, it was for finance. Uh, oh. finance like these guys were like uh, you know uh, J P Morgan yeah. type situation, yeah. golf weekend. 
and they played golf all day. They came off in from, the sun. Did it in the sun. They come back, they eat dinner, and now they do comedy. And I'm the comedy. All I got to, I will never forget is me and Kevin Nealon. And Kevin was like, Bellamy, listen, uh, these are not serious gigs. You know, right. the money's amazing. Right. Do not feel bad when you bomb. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like, Kevin, that. I never bomb, bro. <laughs> Why would you say something like that? <laughs> I'm going to bomb. You're going to bomb. <laughs> He said, but it doesn't matter. They're tired. He said, they're tired. They've been out all day. They're drunk. I'm going to bomb. I do it every year. I'm going to bomb. <laughs> You're going to bomb. Sure as hell. He goes out. He bombs, Eats right? It. Damn. But he doesn't care. Right. He's hitting it as if he's, yo, Kev, I love he's Kev. He's through Kev it. was hitting them joints like they was going over the wall. And I'm like, I know he see he bombing. Right, right, right. And he right. went through the whole set. Boom, boom, boom. Thank you, everybody. And they woke up and they clapped. Right. right. Now, for your next comedian, give it up for blah, 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 Mr. Bill Bellamy. Yo, they go ape shit for two seconds. They're still sleepy. They're drunk. They clap for me and they go back in their seats. Bro, and I'm animated. You know my style. I'm all over yeah. the place. I'm great moving. storyteller. I'm hitting, the, I'm hitting the microphone. I'm doing all his voices. I am tanking, bro. Tanking. Maybe one chuckle here and there. Maybe <laughs> at the end of the night, I know they're not paying me. I'm like, yeah, right. ain't no way I'm getting paid for this. I just took 30 minutes of their time. I should be sent home on Greyhound. The lady who um, hired me said you were fan. Yeah, that's that's what she I don't... said. Don't worry about it. They enjoyed you. They're exhausted. And I was like, well, why wouldn't you put me at another time when they're lively? Right. Well, this is the only time we could do comedy because they want to play golf and they do want to laugh at night, but they get tired. Right. It happens every year. And I was like, oh. I said, I'll never do those gigs again. Yo, it you happened know? to me in Edmonton. Edmonton is a comic <laughs> club in Edmonton, right? Yeah. And I'm selling out every show. It's Christmas, it's Christmas time, too. Okay. So the, the club owner is like, hey, I know you got six shows down here, but there's a uh, an accounting um, firm dinner upstairs you can do it in between the shows you and can do it in between the first for 20 show minutes. yeah in between the first show and the second show now first show and all weekend i'm killing right sold out shows i'm killing so i go upstairs for this show all accountants in there man they looked at me like like i took my dick out in church man <laughs> they looked at me like they they looked at me you ever talk to a a, a dog and they turn their head and look at you like yeah. that's how they looked at me i was on stage and i was nothing I was, eating, was working i was eating ass you remind me of that <laughs> i was eating ass man right after somebody had you know a drunk listen, hangover doo-doo listen I was eating to me ass. listen to me y'all you got to understand we are being completely honest oh, it has it's happened the worst to the world it's too. the worst feeling i don't care how famous you are i don't care how many great it shows hurts. you had you have a show like that it is the most it humbling hurts. thing in your career and you can't get out of it oh. and you're looking at your watch your mouth you, gets dry your mouth gets i don't dry. smoke weed but Whoa. i know what, i've heard what cotton mouth is and man my, your mouth gets dry you on the stage looking for jokes you looking you, your mind goes you got you a whole, might do you got a whole three joke. hours you might do a stock man joke. <laughs> you, you you go you start you start picking up the mic stand looking for you did i leave a joke under the mic stand under this oh uh, my is God. a joke under the stool maybe i may I put some jokes under the stool oh let me see my, my level God. i mean it, it, your mind go blank you, you get cotton mouth your mouth is just, dry as fuck too oh bro my God. and you want to quit you just want to quit and say you know what why am i even up here <laughs> and then you go downstairs and win again and kill again <laughs> So comedy is that that's why comics that's why we're so moody that's why comics are so moody yeah, we, we, we have go, our highs and we lows are, we are we are on a roller coaster every time we get on stage i want to shout out to uh, all the comedians you yes. know um all the veterans all the new guys in the game man listen hey it's we can it's gonna happen fight through your tough and hot yes. times you know everybody don't get a good massage all the time right every don't everybody don't make every layup you know right, what i'm saying right, so right, right. when you go through you when you have you know all sex ain't good sometimes yeah, you have a bad yeah, night yeah, sometimes hey! it's just, it's just ain't tonight. So, the chemistry ain't tonight so all i'm saying is you know guys fight through that keep pushing you know we, we we're being completely honest on top billing we've gone through it so it's a real part of the game but the thing that rings in your head is that <laughs> saying you always hear you're only as good as your last show <laughs> Oh my God. So if your last show you bomb, you're like, oh, oh is this shit. it? Is this it? 
Is this hey, it? Man, like, yo, I'm, I'm out of the game. Let me go back to acting. Hey, I want to have I want to have a, a fun moment with you on the show. We always do a, a segment called All Facts, and I ask you a couple questions, and you just tell me the truth yeah. about it. Okay. All right. All Facts with Guy Torrey. Give me four comedians that have influenced you that you would have wanted to do a show with. Oh, that we've wanted to do a show with. Yeah, okay, if you could. A lot of them I've already done shows with. Okay. Um, I've done one with Joe, of course. He influenced me. I did one with, well, I would say Richard Pryor, of course. Oh, me too. I would say um, my man, uh, George Carlin. Ugh. You know, I would Legend. say Eddie Murphy. I did a movie with him, but never did, you know, a show stand with up. him. Yeah. Stand up with him. Eddie Murphy. I would say uh, Whoopi Goldberg. I mean, no, she's not a stand-up, but that, that one woman plays, she's man. A she's amazing, man. I just, I'm a big fan of Whoopi, man. And uh, my man, I'm, I'm blanking right now. Um, uh, back in the day, uh, man, a uh, Jewish comedian who uh, passed away. Uh, uh, Richard Pryor even, even loved this guy. Uh, I'm thinking this Jewish blanking comedian right now. That, that was, yeah, Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce. Lenny Bruce. Lenny was Bruce. Was bananas. Lenny Bruce. Yes. I would love to have done a show with Bill and Bill with Lenny, Lenny Bruce, man. Okay. But anybody else that, that influenced me, man, I've done shows with. Done yeah. shows with Chris Rock, done shows with Dave Chappelle, done shows with Bill you know, Bellamy. Tory, you. I was going to use that, Eddie Griffin. I've been waiting. Yeah, no, I'm Chaz, kind of, I, was getting, I was waiting for him to say I, I was Bill doing Bellamy. the OGs, the OGs the first. Me? OGs got to come first. I'm big first. bro. Uh, OGs, you, you, you said it right when I was saying it. <laughs> okay. You said it right when I was saying it. No, but yeah, a lot of the guys already did it. But we worked together so many times, man. I mean, it is what it is. That whole. You guys influenced me, man. That whole first season of Def Comedy Jam, man. Mm. I used to watch you guys, man, and just like, man, when you when you did Fat Tuesdays, I just thought that was like, you know, in the belly room. I was just getting oh. started, man. I was just like, Bill Bellamy did my show. You damn right, I did. You know, and Joe Joe was a Joe was a given because you know he, he, he was supportive, so he was gonna come in and do it all the time. But but man, those days was a good day. Pac used to always come. Tupac used to always people come. People don't people when I tell people Tupac used to come to comedy clubs, they be looking at me like. Pac like comedy, yes. I mean, he was in my ear, man. Get, get out your brother's shadow. Create your own lane, man. Fuck Joe. Right. You know, not in a disrespectful type well, yeah, of way. Yeah, but you have to. Fuck Joe, man. You got to get your own lane. You know, create your own thing. I, always at my shows. Always in my ear. Hey, uh, this is a real good one because this is gonna this is gonna spark some some controversy a little bit. <laughs> you got to give me all facts with Guy Tory. Give me your top five funniest women you've ever seen. Pass. Future present. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh wow! Because I got some on Wanda my list. Sykes, Wanda, bam. Adele Givens, bam. You know, I would say, um, Mom's Mabley was a boss. Bam. Mom's Mabley was a boss. She was about her business. If you don't say this woman name in this five, you got two left. Oh my God! I don't have I'll, five. I'll, I'll, you, I got two that they got to make your list. If they don't oh, make your list, man. I'm gonna be disappointed. Oh, Go ahead. Man. No pressure. No pressure. Some more. That's not what I was gonna say, but I like uh, some more though. Some more is uh, fire. Um, I'm going it's older. One, it's I'm going one, older it's, though. It's That's nobody, it's, you know, I got two that that, that are funny. You got one me. more. I got one. Oh, and you, time. I know you're not gonna say them. These two. Oh uh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold Funniest hold on. women ever. Now, ever. No pressure. <laughs> Man. You got one left. I got two I got, for you. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm hold talking on. about. You cannot breathe, bro. These two women to me are, they are so legendary. It makes no sense. Damn. Can Why I tell? Can I tell right you now? one of them? Go ahead. Carol Burnett. Ca yeah. See, I've never. I, you I never thought Carol Burnett was funny? Sketches. I've never seen her stand up. I, 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 I I'm said funniest stand -up. woman you ever seen. Okay. Okay. So, I'm so it, 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 can, it can encompass Tracy Ullman. Then you know. Well, there you go. Yeah. But I got one more for you, Lucille Ball. Give me comedic actress, yes. As an actress, I'm thinking I'm in stand-up mode. Lucille Ball. Yes. And this was in black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what no color? What no technical color? Standard, standard deaf and black and white. You understand what I'm saying? Standard definition. So, so listen, listen, listen. And, and, and the reason I asked you, and I'm joking around, because the people you pick were fine. I just think like these two women were such pioneers in my mind for women, like uh, yeah. Carol well, Moms Burnett, Mabley. Uh, Moms Mabley, uh, you know, Luce, Lucille Ball. Like they, they were, they were pioneering the game where it was like cats was not really thinking women right. could be that funny. Right. Or or lead right. of a show, you right. know what I mean? And, and Tracy uh, Ullman was the same thing. I mean, she, I'm sure thing. she was influenced by Carol Burnett. Yeah, you know, but but she she stood. But that's why I first saw um, Bart Simpson. They incubated Bart Simpson on Tracy Ullman's show. Wow! Yeah, they was doing, yeah, they was doing little 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 short 
commercials, little short um, sketches with Bart Simpson on the Tracy Ullman show, and then they incubated it there, and then it became his own thing. Wow. Yeah. Man, oh man. Well, gee, I literally got a tutorial on comedy. <laughs> People got a chance to get to know you better. People got a chance to get to know your journey. Um, anytime that you want to come by, promote, or just kick it with me, man, laugh, smoke a few cigars, and Let's kick it. it. You're my brother, and I love you, man. man Thank you for, for being on me, top. Man. I was, I was waiting. I was waiting. I, I always see the show like, man, when, when am I going to be on the show? Yo, you got to be but on it, man. Here, You're, man. My You're my guy. You're my guy. Hey, everybody, you, this is really a wonderful episode for me. I enjoy getting a chance to sit down and give my brother his flowers. Only on top billing can we do it so big, baby. Holla. See you on the next one. Got Tory, baby. Let's go. Top Billy, GT, and Billy. Everybody, we got Got Tory up next only on Top Billy.